Hi everyone, welcome back to Gears at the Sim Racing Podcast. My name is Ving and once again we're going to talk about news. It's been a crazy February, but March is here, that means Potatona, Rain on iRacing and much more. But before, I will start with a small news. First, F2B to be F1. As I talked on the last episode, F1 is coming on the May and on April we will have a little bit more news. But some of the things are getting a little bit skeptic. While F1 in Twitter or F1 content creator Twitter is going nuts and everyone is making crazy videos about it, how excited they are, I completely understand. But hear me out, these two things that put me off. First is the price. Talking about a game that is released year after year on the same basis. You know, some change on the tracks, some change on the system, but never have a revamp. So I would expect more a game to come every three years. I think three years would be a very good lifespan for a game and be proper release and proper develop. But yeah, the price is 60 to 70 pounds for consoles PC and 100 pounds if you want a champion edition. I think for a target of kids with 14 to 20 years old, I think it's too much to ask for them and put a little bit away people. But what's put away is the change on the engine. So for 10 years, decades, a little bit more, they've been using the old engine from Codemaster and now eSport is pushing to use Unreal Engine 4. Two things, three things, whatever you want to say that couldn't put away. First, Unreal Engine 4 is not stable when it comes to racing games. It's a good power engine, but not stable. And we will talk about it. Second, they have Frostbite, that is one of their engines. They use it on FIFA, they use it on Maiden, they use it, I think, even on the games of Star Wars. So it's an engine that already have made it on the house, so an engine that provides good intakes. The third one is Unreal Engine is not stable, but it's not stable comparing to the old engine, or the old engine was not the perfect one. F122 was bad. F123 physics getting better, but now they change. So they change why they think they reach the maximum possible on that engine and they need to do it something new for sure. So it's something that I don't know what's happening and what was not happening, but they changing. And Unreal Engine 4 is not the best. I said the Corsa Competizione has been there, have taken a lot of development to get it right. But Kunos is getting back to their own engine for the set of Corsa 2. So <laughs> that means something. Unreal Engine 5 is with Range Sport, but is not the best. And you know that WRC is with Unreal Engine 4. And we know shutter problems, frame rate problems, a lot of the quality is not there. So I don't know. I totally understand the Unreal Engine 4 instead of the 5, because I think 5 will not allow to use on the old consoles, so they will have to build the game twice, so it's not a point, I understand that part, but still, I think they will, should, if they're gonna do the last game on this last uh, Xbox and PS4, for sure, just don't change it now, and change it for Unreal Engine 5 to make something really better, but it's not so many games with Unreal Engine 5, so, we are there on a tricky position. Other news is TCR is moving away from Race Room. That makes completely sense. Race Room is not on the best way now. It's a game already with loads of years. Game that has been putting on the side for a lot of the community. So TCR want to upgrade the level of the gaming or on the mo real motorsport and the sim racing part. So we're going to expect the Audi RS3, LMS, Hyundai Elantra N, Hyundai Veloster N and on the Civic Type R now coming to iRacing and a lot of championship. Makes sense. And you know, iRacing is probably the most immersive platform that we have now with a lot of tracks, a lot of possibilities. Gran Turismo 7 last update bring three new cars available for PS4, PS5. But I will not say three new cars, I will say four, because the Vugari now, the Vision, is available for everyone and you don't need to own a watch from Vugari to have now the car on the game. So you don't need to be rich anymore <laughs> to have the car. So the new cars are the Audi TTS Coupe with a power rating of 511 horsepower, available new and use it with a price new with 68,000 credits. Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 MR GCR 2006 
can get new and use it come with the power of 506 horsepower and new will cost you 100,000 credits the renault r4 gtl 85 is of course only on use <laughs> as you can imagine come with 153 horsepower and can get for 24,000 credits another addition will be the more engine swap combinations cafe extra menus the lamborghini one New World Secret Races, Swap Weekly Challenge, Mitsubishi Lap Time Challenge, that Digit have already made a, a very good track, guys, so I will leave a link for this video. I know that Gran Turismo is not bringing the best updates, but me how I would love, like you say, to have a Nissan R39 GT1 or the Ferrari 296 GT3 or more of the racing cars that already been even on the data on Gran Turismo 3, Gran Turismo 4, Gran Turismo 5 but i think they don't want to commit a mistake that commit on a past that was portable uh, cars from one generation to the other one and they don't want to do what forza is doing you see that forza is going down so they bring road cars that are quite used if you want or not and is what gran turismo always been a little bit more about the used cars to bring that to bring that uh, road cars to a street car to a uh, order a circuit car one of the things that is important and I, I think we need to mention is the way that Gran Turismo develop always the cars. Ian Mardoboro is going to be with me on the podcast and he's going to talk about how Gran Turismo 5 was already giving that vibes, you know, on the Audi, on the Nissan, uh, 350Z, the GTR. The, when, when he jumped on the cars, he said that he knew how the car would behave it and will be the same that was on Gran Turismo. So something that normally people don't talk about it and that is really, really important. So, you know, it's always about what people like and what people don't like it. And I'm with you. I want more circuits. I want a little bit more cars. And I think three cars is not enough for the free update, but still is a free update. We need to take it the way it is. Lema Ultimate, guys, what a surprise have been. I know. I'm with you, I'm with you 100% when you say early release is a shit. I'm allowed to say shit? Yeah, I think so. Early release is bad, let's say. <laughs> early release is bad. Early release is super bad. We are playing or we are helping develop the game for free. I totally understand. But they release the game and in a space of one week, what, three, four odd fix, they keep re updating the game and they keep making the game uh, more reliable. So 1.4 thousand players on Steam is great and is more, for example, in Forza, WRC, more than um, Automobilista 2 now. You know, so it's good. If you squeeze it, squeeze it, it's good, <laughs> it's good. But one of the things is that you can see, if you go to LinkedIn, is the evolution that the company is taking now. So they are, after the release of the game, they are hiring more people. So means that they was needing that game, that money to come inside and that money to be used to progress the game. So in one way, I think they learn with the, what happened in the past and that learning curve now is coming. And I think I really want Le Mans Ultimate to be a great game. I want to play classic Le Mans cars. I want to play classic Le Mans trucks. I want to play classic WEC moments. So for sure it will be something really beautiful to, to have on a game. To finish the rumble about numbers, hear me out. WRC numbers are going down, completely down. Dirty 2 is getting more traction. Like I talked about the Unreal 4 and the old system, I think I don't like Unreal 4 on WRC. I don't like even the way that the cars are portrayed. I feel the cars are, look like more a toy. I like more the way they are on Dirty 2, they look more robust. I like that robustness of the cars because the cars are beasts. We want two cars to be portrayed as a beast. You know, imagine playing a game of zombies and zombies are toys. Uh, you know, you want zombies to be scary. You want, you want that, you know? So I think let's show how eSports couldn't be making a mistake going with the new uh, Unreal Engine 4 on the F1, but let's see what's gonna happen. One of the things was when I talked now with Lawrence was uh, he say on this community, WRC numbers now are one under, and people applying on Dirty are four times higher. So that make sense why people prefer, still prefer Dirty 2. But you know that the team of the week have to be always Rain, I Rain and Putaitona. But before we jump on Putaitona, just very quickly on Rain, I didn't try it. I'm not one of the people that can try it, the better part of the rain. A lot of the uh, guys have been trying and two videos that I want to talk about. Matt Malone, when he was doing it 
uh, live stream, I would say, with Tony Kanan. Have a look on what Tony Kanan is saying about rain. Much, man. What do you want to do? You want to go wide and then cross where the rubber is supposed to be in the apex and go like completely offline on next. It's kind of like. Oh, that's what the AI so if you was drive doing. The, yeah. Yeah, if you drive the race line because of the rubber, it's more slippery, right? So basically, what you got to try to do is kind of like a like a triangle. So you, you go like completely offline, then you cross the apex because you're slow on the rubber, then you accelerate on the exit off the rubber as well. So basically, it's like a completely different line. You're trying to avoid uh, the racing line. Great video from the inside of Tony Kanan when he explained how the rubber needs to take the apex, not using a racing lines. I think is really, really an interesting and probably a lot of people didn't saw this happening and this part, this or this important part. But one of the things that I want to mention too is while Jimmy Broben was using on his uh, stream and showing the rain, he go on the first turn on Brandanch and you can see the pebbles are getting there. But on his video, the pedals are not very visible. So I want to know if the advanced graphic cards will play a key part on the rain advantage or not. So let me know what you think about it because for me it's a little bit confused if the graphic cards will play that advantage or no. I know that Dave Cam made a great video where he explained how a lower PC comparing with the IPC, where is, are the difference or not, the link is below, like the link for the, this video on Jimmy Broben, but have a look because I feel that the advantage will be very higher if you want a very advanced graphic card like a 4, uh, 4080 or a 4090, so let me know what is your thoughts on this one because I'm really keen to understand if we'll play or not an advantage. Put Daytona is here, 9 of March, like I say, if you like potatoes, you like uh, Daytona, you love iRacing, this is going to be your stream, or you love rain, this is going to be your stream, going to be the first biggest event with rain on iRacing. And a lot of things that I talk with Lawrence are quite interesting. First, I was to have Lawrence to talk here or to give us an inside what's going to happen. But after I saw that he went to other podcasts and I don't want to use that. I think is disrespectful because we have a lot of content that we can do. And I think if you do this one, it's sad. So I don't want to go on that type of shenanigans. And I decided that I will not record it with him for keeping a clean base on my part of the channel. So he already dropped a video where he explained a little bit everything that you need to know, the prices, the, the teams, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. But while I was talking with him, I raising some questions that he answered and I think are important. First of all, one is iRacing is not an official partner of the Putaitona. And that's really important too. And why that happened? I think Lawrence go very well when he don't want to have that affiliation with the racing because he cannot control what people will do on the stream. If it was a stream, official stream for my racing and someone says something wrong, you know, they can be on a problem for Potatona, for Lawrence and of course for iRacing. So he prefer to play a safe part. Other thing, you know, you never know if the rain will be 100% correct or not, you know, so I think it's a safe part for iRacing too. You know, another part is this, the logos, as you may imagine, I didn't realize, but the Put Daytona logo is the same logo than Daytona. You know, it's important because he don't want to use the content from other companies and, you know, Put Daytona logo is the same logo that he's using on Daytona, so completely understand. One of the things is the prices. The prices will be, in terms of money-wise, will be divided equal for all the drivers. So if the driver drive LMP3 or the driver is on Asian Cup or is just driving on Irish uh, Cups, they don't care. Everyone will receive the same and that is a big part. The second part is this is just to raise money for the drivers. No money will be go to Potatona, no money will go for the Potato Nation or for Lawrence Duzwaza. And I think the companies are not taking even any money from their part to Lawrence. So everything is to donated and that is something really important. And that come to what I want to talk. I think what Lawrence is doing is completely out of this world. So normally we just see these companies together on a Sim Expo, for example. And on the Sim Expo, you know, company A gonna speak about company B, company B gonna speak about company C. And you know, you know what all works. Here you have Eusvinkel, Simicube, you have uh, Aztec, you have Moza, you have Logitech. So you have all these brands 
together with one goal, support a community, support drivers. So that is something really, really, really important and something that you should not take out from what Lawrence is doing. So I think in making the, I said to him, like a butterfly effect, you're gonna put a, a foundation for something. We don't know what's gonna happen, but for sure it's gonna be something that in one year or two years or even five years, we're gonna talk about it, gonna be something that's gonna create a boundary and gonna create a standard for what will come on sim racing. I do a little bit, I'll say a little bit probably a job, <laughs> very small job, supporting the drivers that are part of the podcast or part of uh, our family, but no way I'm near the support that Lawrence and the Potato Nation are doing and what it is really, really unbelievable. To finish, quite important is not all the donations are giving the same prizes. Some prizes that you can imagine like active pedals from SimQ, you need to donate a little bit more and I think that one is for 200. So you're gonna have uh, donations of 20, 50, 100, 200, and that donations get gonna get you a better, better prizes, but that is normal. But even with five, you don't gonna receive a bad prizes. The prizes are amazing. You have button boxes, you have uh, Coach David um, setups um, or memberships. You have oh man, so many things. You have sh uh, the shifters, you have uh, active pedals, you have, ah oh man, it's like an advent calendar <laughs> for uh, kids. Or I said to him, I think like when you go to Christmas, remember in the 90s and the 2000s, when you open your uh, uh, postal and you have received that Christmas pamphlet for what all the toys, this is the same thing for Sim Racer. So I take my kudos to um, what Lawrence is doing with the Potato Nation that, that for me is the strongest community that you have on Sim Racing. Moving to talk about something important is how can you support the channel? First, the easy and cheapest way is always leave a like button if you do it on the videos on YouTube. So subscribe the channel, hit the like button and let us push. We are doing our around 15,000 views on this podcast now on the moment a month. So it's something really, really good, like something that I can push even more that more. So without your help and of course, same thing on the Spotify and Apple podcast. Apple podcast, you still cannot leave a review, I don't know why, we're still uh, waiting to approve on the Apple on, on that part, but on Spotify we are already over 200 five-star reviews, so please guys keep helping, subscribe to the channel and let us push more. We already reached number 39 on February on the best um, podcast in leisure, so guys please keep pushing this a little bit more, I'm trying to push now for video games and sport. Sport will be difficult, but video games, we can do it. We are already in good numbers in some of the locations, Hong Kong, Thailand, that I don't know why, but <laughs> we are going very well there. So guys, please keep subscribe the channel and that. And the same thing, go to the Patreon, you know, we can help our drivers. We have four drivers, Ruben, Aiden, Jan Moro, and the Jude, they are drivers that are going with our logo and we are supporting them from the part of the podcast. So we have three tires very fast. First tire is just to support me and Games with Cancer. On the second and the third tire, you are support Games with Cancer with one pound, one pound for me to pay for it. I get better equipment and to push more the content for these drivers and the rest go for them. Every quarter of the year, you know, we pick up the cake and give to them. So guys, I hope see you there to support our drivers. Free modes, very, very, very fast. To talk about it, BMW S1000 RR for Assetto Corsa. Yes, I know, motorbikes on Assetto Corsa don't belong. I don't know if the data is accurate, but if you are a big fan, have a try because, you know, it's a 200 horsepower that you can jump on that free roam uh, tracks and, you know, it's just for fun. Give a try, ex check what it can do it and will be available on the page. And to finish, one of the best mods that I ever have a pleasure to try. Race Sim Studio once again deliver a very, very good. Is a 2010 Formula Era V8. What a car! You know, you can customize it completely the car to your driving experience. You know that in terms of the aerodynamic, it will bring the F deck capabilities of the 2000 of the 2000 uh, era. And you know, it's such a beautiful car. If you look on pictures, just have a look. They are completely crafted to perfection. And you know, it's such a detail mode. Kudos to RSS to once again deliver something like this and you know, come with a price of four pounds. For my part is everything. Next week, you're gonna have more guests to come. Amir is coming to the podcast. 
But guys, keep a, a look on what we are doing. Support has been uh, all of you on the, on the podcast and let's push more this content. See you.